In this video, I'll share seven pro tips to get the most out of OneNote. Whether you're a student, a professional, or someone who just wants to get organized, I'm sure that these tips will help. One thing that I really appreciate about physical notebooks like this is that I can review my notes in chronological order. I'm much more likely to review notes that I took this week than to review notes that I took six months ago. But OneNote makes it difficult to do this. So to get around this, you can use the OneNote feed function. From the desktop, you can click on this icon that looks like a sticky note. You'll have to sign into your Microsoft account for the first time. I've already signed in, so it goes straight into it. Once you do this, it'll show you the list of notes in chronological order, starting from the most recent, regardless of which notebook and sections the notes are in. This feed is actually an aggregate from your OneNote, Samsung Note, and Sticky Note. There's a lot you can do here, but that's outside the scope of this video. I just wanted to show you that you can use this tool to browse through your notes in chronological order. One big caveat is that when you first activate the feed, it could take a long time to load. And sometimes it causes OneNote to freeze altogether. At least that's been my experience. Your experience might be different and hopefully it'll work fine for you, but I just wanted to call that out. Staying with the topic of search, when you search for something in OneNote, it'll actually scan and search through all of your active notebooks, which could be a problem if you have a lot of notes. It can take a lot of time and it could also make your search results not very helpful. So for example, if I were to search for a term, let's say quality control, you can see that there are a bunch of notes that actually match that search term. So it's not very helpful. So what I often like to do is to hit this drop down and change my filter from all notebooks to this notebook. And as you can see, it finds that one single note, which is super helpful. Now, I don't want to have to do this every time. So what you can do is hit that drop down again, and you can now set this scope as default. Okay. So now every time you search for a phrase, it'll only scan through the current notebook that you're in. Sometimes when I have a lot of notes on a page, I like to group relevant sections together and bring visual interest by adding some colors. Unfortunately, OneNote doesn't allow you to add colors to its container. So for example, if I wanted to color this container, there is no paint box that I can select. So one easy workaround for that is select all of the text in the container and go to insert table and just select a single cell. And when I do this, now I have the option to go to the table tab and choose the color that I want to fill this in. So let's choose this green here. And I actually don't like borders around it, so I can select hide borders. And I can do the same with the other containers as well. I actually create a little shortcut on top because I use this so often. I don't have to go to insert. I can just choose the table from here, select, and I'll choose a different shading for this. And again, hide border, and I will do the same with the rest. So that's one way you can color blocks of text. If you're someone who likes to make annotations on inserted images and printouts, you probably already know that you can set the document as background so that they don't move around. What I mean by that is, so for example, I have an inserted printout here, and let's say I draw an arrow to this part. I could very easily accidentally move the document around, and that annotation no longer becomes relevant. So what I can do in this case is I can right mouse click on the document and set picture as background, and now it's no longer selectable to accidentally move it around. However, if your document has multiple pages, you'd have to do this for every single page, which could be really tedious. And for most part, when I do insert printouts, I almost always want to have it set as a background. So you could actually make this the default. You can do that by going to File, then to Options, and then under Advanced, you can scroll all the way down and select automatically set inserted file printouts in the background. So next time, let's create a new page. Go to insert, file printout, 
and I'll choose the toaster manual again, hit insert, and you see that they've already been set as background. If you ever need to create multiple pages at once, rather than going to add pages and renaming each one, so for example, Monday here, Tuesday here, so on and so forth, I'm going to delete this. You can actually just type them out on a note page. Spelling error. You can select them all, right mouse click, and choose link to pages. And you'll notice that the note pages are created automatically. Now to take that a step further, if the note pages that you want to create follows any sort of pattern, you can use Excel to fill that out. So for example, I'll type in Monday and I'm going to just drag this down till I get to Sunday. I'll copy that, go back to OneNote, paste that in, select them all, right click, link to pages. And that's a quicker way. If you use OneNote for iPad, the scribble feature has now been integrated to the app. So you can use this pen with the letter A to convert your handwriting to text in real time. And it works fairly well. If you choose to handwrite your notes instead, but still want to be able to search for keywords within your handwritten text, you can. But sometimes it does take OneNote a little bit of time for it to recognize the text. So for example, let's say I want to search for this word, word. I'm going to do control F to search for this page only. And I'll type in word, hit enter. And as you can see, it says no matches found. Now, in that case, I will highlight this entire handwritten text, right mouse click and choose treat selected ink as handwriting. Now, when I do that, I'm going to do control F again to find on this page and type in word. Now you can see that it finds it. Okay, that's it for today's video. I hope these tips were helpful. If they were, hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more contents like this. And if you are interested in learning more about OneNote, make sure you watch these videos next. Thanks.